but you're back second grade and that means you are ready for our next lesson which is math of course so for math we're going to be continuing comparing three digit numbers but today we're adding a twist and upping the stakes just a little bit so let's check out our learning target it says i can compare three digit numbers in different forms so we're still working to compare and use our brand new math vocabulary and symbols but we're going to compare numbers now that are in different forms this is something we're bringing back from a couple weeks ago bringing back in our knowledge of different number forms so let's remind ourselves of the four different number forms we have learned okay second grade so here up on this colorful poster you can see that there are four different ways to express a three digit number we've been working with standard form can you say that with me standard that's when we only express numbers with digits that's what we've been working with so far so we've got standard and then also we have unit form remember unit form tells us how many of each unit are in this number how many hundreds how many tens and how many ones so we've got standard and unit form then we also learned expanded form can you say this with me expanded expanded so expanded form is when we made an addition sentence that matched the value of our number in expanded form we wrote out the value of each digit how much was each digit worth depending on its place so the two is worth 200 seven is worth 70 and the three is worth three so these are all the four different ways we learned second grade we've just been comparing standard form to standard form but today we're going to mix it up and you're going to have to compare different forms together to figure out which one is less than or greater than so before we get to comparing i want us to warm up and make sure we're sharp with all our forms so i want you to have a whiteboard or a notebook out anything you can write with so we can practice translating our numbers from different forms so second grade, I want you to look really carefully at this problem. Sometimes when we're working with numbers, we can mix up the order of unit form or expanded form we're given. So is this number 83? No, it's not because did you read it carefully? It says eight one three tens how would you write this number correctly eight ones three tens can you write it on your board if i have eight ones it goes in the one place and our three tens are in the tens place so this number is 38 38 when we're looking at groups of numbers in different forms you got to pay extra close attention because it may not be given to you in order of place value but it's your job to put it in the right place okay last warm-up hmm this one is going to require you to pay extra close attention as well 30 plus 100 plus 5 how would we write this number in standard form so i'm starting with hundreds because i know that's our biggest value hundreds 100 is how many hundreds 100 good job and then I'm finding my tens number, 30. 30 is how many tens? 
three, good job. And then my ones, five, we just have five ones. So what number does this equal? 135. We had to take what we were adding and put it in the correct order from hundreds, tens, and what's. So that's why you gotta pay extra close attention and translate a number no matter what order it comes in. Okay, good job warming up with our different number forms. So we're gonna use all that knowledge today when we're talking about comparing, less than or greater than. But yesterday, we were taking less than and greater than and turning it into symbols. So here's another example. 24 is less than 35. So this first number is smaller, so we're saying 24 is less than. But if we wanted to shorten that and write it with a symbol, we could write 24 is less than 34. Do you remember second grade? Why is this the symbol for less than? Why this direction is the symbol going? Why does it look like this? Less than. Do you remember? Because the opening in our symbol always has to face the bigger number. It has to look like it's going to eat the bigger number. So in this number sentence, if the opening is going towards our second number, we know 34 is bigger and 24 is the smaller number since the opening is going away from this first number. So this number is smaller. So to compare, we would say 24 is less than 34. Since this symbol is telling us 24 is the smaller number. But what happens when we reverse? And now instead, we're trying to say 34 is greater than 24. So now we're explaining to someone that this first number is actually the bigger of the two. So we need to base our language off the first number. But if we wanted to shorten it, what would this sentence look like? We want to use a symbol instead. Now we could write 34 is greater than 24. Why is this correct, second grade? Can you tell me about the direction of the symbol? Why is that important? What does this tell us? That the opening is facing the bigger number. Because like we went over, our symbol is going to eat the bigger number. So the mouth faces whichever number is bigger. And in this case, the first number is bigger. And since our language always depends on the first number, we would read this as 34 is greater than 24 because everything comes off that first number. And with this opening, we know the first number is greater. Okay, awesome people. So we are blending together two big pockets of our math knowledge today. Number forms and comparing. We're putting them both to the test at the same time. So I want you to keep your whiteboard out because we're going to start blending. But before we get there, let's give ourselves a break for our great work so far. So come on, stand up with me. And I've got a this or that coming up. Are you standing? Okay, so when you're doing a beautiful art project, which tool do you like to use better? Which one do you prefer? Crayons. If so, you're going to do high knees. Or 
markers. If so, you're gonna touch the sky. What do you prefer, second grade? Crayons or markers? I prefer markers just because they have a bit of a richer color. So I'm gonna touch the sky for five seconds. You got your pick? You ready? Here we go. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. I gotta stretch it out. So come on, sit right back down with me. And I want you to get back out your whiteboard because we're gonna be writing some number sentences. Okay, so as you're sitting, I want you to copy down this number sentence onto your board. 70 plus 200 plus one. And we're gonna compare it to 721. So make sure you leave that blank spot so we can put our correct symbol. Okay, do you have it copied? Remember, always pause me if you need more time. So second grade. When we're looking at this number sentence, we see two numbers in totally different form. We've got expanded form and we have standard form. In order to compare these numbers and make sure we're accurate, we want to translate the numbers into the same form so we can compare them quicker. So we want to take this expanded form, and we want to put it back together into standard form. So our first step before we compare is to translate. So let's see, Super Scholars. We've got three digits in this number. Can you tell me what number is this? Pay attention. Are the values in order? Are they mixed up? They are. So we got to start with the hundreds. Which number is a hundreds? 200. 200 is how many hundreds? Two, of course. So we're going to write a two in the hundreds plate because these are equal. Then what about our tens? What's our tens number? 70. 70 is how many tens? Seven tens, so that's going to go in our tens place. Then what about our ones? We have how many ones? Just one one, exactly. So what number is this? 271. So now that both of these numbers are in standard form, we can compare them. So 271 compared to 721. Hmm, second grade. 271 is less than or greater than our second number. Remember, it all depends on this first one. Less than, greater than. 271 is less than 721. Why is that? Because, what's the reason? Can you tell me? How did you know that? Because two hundreds is less than seven hundreds. So when we were comparing this number, we can see there's a big difference in the hundreds. That's how we know that this first number was less than. So then what symbol are we gonna put? How can we complete this number sentence with a symbol? Less than, less than needs to face to the right because with less than, we know the first number's small, but the second number is big. So the opening has to face that bigger number. Woo! Okay, awesome people. There's a lot of steps to these problems, but they're working so many sides of your mathematician brain. Let's check.
check out a second one. So, right underneath your board, or if you want to erase, I need you to copy down this number sentence. Four tenths, two ones. We're going to compare it to 32. 32. Make sure you got that nice and written down. And let's compare. Are these numbers in the same form? No, they're in totally different forms. We've got unit and standard. So before we can compare, what do we need to do? We need to change or translate this unit form. So let's go ahead and do that. So we've got four tens, two ones. So tens and ones. What number is this second grade? Can you write that on your board? Four tens, two ones is 42. We have the number 42. And now that we can see it in standard form, can you compare to 32? So is 42 less than or greater than? Based off this first number, would we say it's less than or greater than 32? Hmm. 42 is greater than 32. This first number is the bigger one, so we need to say it's greater than. Because, how do we know that? 42 is greater than 32 because, what did you notice? Because 4 tenths is greater than 3 tenths. That was the big difference. 4 tenths is greater Therefore, 42 is greater. But what about our symbol? We're going to shorten our sentence. And how do we show greater than? By facing our opening to the left. Our greater than symbol opens to the left because this first number is bigger when we're using greater than. It's telling us our first number is bigger, so our alligator mouth has to eat that bigger number. Okay, awesome people. So, we're going to try two more together of our translating and comparing. So, whatever you've got, reset, reset. Okay, you got your nice clean board. Let's check out two more comparing problems. Okay, second grade, what do you see? Do we need to translate or change a number form? Yes, we do. We've got expanded form. So we have to change it into standard form before we can compare to really make sure that we're accurate. So let's see. We've got 300 plus 60. So that means we're going to have three digits for working with hundreds. So what number is this second grade? 300 plus 60. Three hundreds. Sixty. Six tenths. Are there any ones? Nope, so we show that with a zero. So what number is this? Three hundred sixty. Good job. So now that they're both in standard form, what can we do? We can compare. So let's see. 306. Compare it to 360. Is 306 less than or greater than? Is it the smaller or bigger number? All depends on this first one. 
306 is the smaller number. So 306 is less than 360. But how do you know that second grade? What was the reason we know this is true? Because they have the same amount of hundreds, but what's different? 306 is less than 360 because zero tens is less than six tens. The tens place was the big difference that allowed us to figure out that 306 was less than. But what's our symbol? If we want to shorten this sentence, less than? you draw it? The opening goes towards the right. This first number is smaller, so our symbol has to go towards the second bigger number. Since we know the first number is less than, it's small. So make sure you've got that correct direction. Okay, so the very, very last one. Let's see what we've got. So go ahead and write this down on your board or your notebook. 35, we're going to compare it to 7 ones, 3 tenths. So what do you notice, second grade? What do we need to do first before we even compare? We need to change or translate 7 ones, 3 tenths. What number is this unit for? Okay, so we look like we have tens and ones. But can you put this number in the correct order? Can you be extra careful? Seven ones, three tens. What's this number going to look like? Seven ones. Three tens is thirty-seven. Thirty-seven. So you need to be really careful of what unit you're talking about to put that digit in the right place. Awesome. So now we can compare. What do you think, second grade? Thirty-five compared to thirty-seven. What would we say? Less than, greater than. 35 is less than 37. 35 is the smaller number, so we need to say 35 is less than. But because, what's the reason? Why is this true? 35 is less because the tens are the same because five ones is less than seven ones. The ones place had different values, which told us that 35 was less. So what symbol are we going to use? Can you fill it in? to the right. This alligator is going to eat our second number because when our alligator opens to the right, we know that first number is smaller. So 35 is less than 37 because our monster is going to eat that bigger number. Okay, second grade. So our place value knowledge is so, so important when we're looking at changing unit form and comparing. So you're going to use both these skills together on your own task today. So let's take a look at our new dojo worksheet and see what you got. Okay, second grade. So on your comparing three digit numbers worksheet, you have three sentences you need to complete. Three number sentences. And you have a few steps 
in order for you to accurately complete this sentence. First, translate each number into standard form. So you're going to see that in each number sentence, there's one number that's in a different form. So before you compare, you need to change this number into standard form so everything can be easier to see. So you're going to write right on this line what the number is in standard form. So you have a space to write the standard form of your number. That's first. Then complete the sentence with less than or greater than. So you're going to use our same symbols and our same language to complete the sentence. There's going to be a little key down in the corner that can help you with your language and your symbols. But after translating, you're going to complete the number sentence by writing in less than or greater than in the circle, which all depends on this first number. Okay, second grade. So work nice and carefully when you're comparing these numbers. Always check your work. And I can't wait to see what you got on this Wednesday.